Hello friends, one more Sabbath school class, Loma Linda Longevity, Health and Longevity class. Today the topic is Mission to the Enriched, and then we will um, take a look of what was the experience of Paul when he was in Athens, uh, in, in the, over there in Greece. And then uh, we will take some lessons for, from that to apply to our life today. So let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us. Bless the students, their families, and bless everyone else that is um, attending these sessions. Be with everyone and give us the peace in Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. So the verse for this um, is f found in Acts 17, 24. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human beings or human hands. What we mean by that, what Paul means by meant by that is that he found a group of people there that um, were Greeks and they were people that used the brain and so they were thinking and then Paul said okay I have to find a way to reach these people and when he mentioned this verse I will go to the next uh, slide to see why he went there The first thing is that uh, he wanted to have a common uh, point with those uh, people there. So um, he said in Acts 17:23, For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you so he used the belief that those uh, um, Greeks have in gods now they have the Zeus the, uh, the, the, the god of, uh, of war Jupiter and, uh, and Hercules and all of these uh, gods uh, from the Greek mythology mythology and then he found one place that there was a God that they didn't know. And then he said, well, this God is nothing else than the God that I'm going to tell you, that is um, Jesus Christ. In his dissertation in the Areopagus, uh, what, Paul was, what was Paul's way to dealing with the pagans? So he praised them first. Instead of uh, going there and judging these people that have a, a religion that was not matching with his, he praised them, hey, you, it looks like you guys are religious, you are concerned about religion. Then he respected them. He didn't address them as an expert who was going to change their perception, but someone who he wanted to share his knowledge as an equal, so he was in the same level with the uh, Athenians or the Greeks there. He found in the altar of the unknown God a bridge that uh, unites both thoughts. So he got common points as we see in the title. He found common points with that people. And then he didn't even mock at, at their ignorance. So he knew that those gods that uh, the Athenians were following, they were all stone and rocks and they could not do anything. But uh, he didn't go there and, and make, and make, and, and make a, joy, a joke of them or laugh at them. On the contrary, he admired their desire to worship, even that which was unknown to them. So, the same thing we should do when we go to reach other people. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth 
and does not live in temples built by human hands. So he was uh, trying to, to combine with these people a knowledge that they have, that the world was created by something on that time. To reach non-Christian people, we must adapt our speech. We will have to use unconventional methods, starting from common points. For, for instance, hang, hang out with a group of bikers, talk about Jesus based on a movie, accept that my listeners or our listeners worship a multitude of gods and talk to them about one of them to get to Jesus. And maybe we will find some, some common ground with these people. These are not the speeches that we expect to hear in a traditional church or speaking with Christians of other denominations. We must speak to others about what they know and not what only what we know. Two points in common here that I put there, one is creation. Most of people have an idea that this world it was created somehow. Even the, the evolutionists, um, today, most of the evolutions that think, they, uh, they think that there, is, there was an intelligent design or designer. And uh, I remember one time I was uh, listening to this speech and they said, okay, Maybe we, we didn't come by chance, but maybe someone started uh, 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 building up things or, or constructing things and, and, and building up cells and animals and some superior mind was done that. The only problem is that they don't recognize God as this superior mind. They think that uh, we came from... Uh, from aliens from another planet and then they decide uh, they start uh, and they design things here well in any in any case they might believe in, in an intelligent designer and we might use that as a common point even with evolutionists can can you believe that but another one that i put here is the healthcare or lifestyle um, is something that people need is something that they need in order to prevent the diseases that are common today. Diabetes, obesity, um, heart disease, stroke, cancer. So lifestyle is related to those diseases and this is something that we can get in agreement with them. Once Paul got their attention, he made a call to which they could now respond. Seek God. So look for Jesus. This is about Jesus, and, and then he starts uh, talking a little more about Jesus to that population. And we know some of them believed, some of them did not believe, and some of them uh, were thinking about that for a, for a while. So, we read in Acts 17.31, uh, For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of, he, of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. So this Paul was talking about Jesus Christ, that um, one day he will judge the world with justice. And, and, and the proof that uh, he would will do it is because he was dead and then was raised from the dead from the dead to to live again and one day he will come back and then he continued doing that so if we consider the situation of the world today uh, like the war in ukraine the hamas israeli war famine violence crime immorality inequality prejudice, corruption, selfishness, and, and calamities everywhere, and, and uh, discontent, and violence, and, and people killing other people for nothing. Uh, we might say, what's going to happen to this world? And that's the time that we might uh, pronounce 
that Jesus Christ, He came to save us and He is about to come back to this world to redeem, to redeem this world, to fix all of this mess. So the same thing Paul did. When the time came, some laughed. Others preferred to continue talking at another time. And a few were immediately convinced that uh, that that is that that was uh, the true way. So, according to Ellen White, he got um, she got these words for us: new methods must be introduced. And she was talking about sharing Jesus with other people. God's people must awake to the necessities of the time in which they are living. God has men who him whom he call who him he will call into his service men who will not carry forward the work in the lifeless way in which it has been carried forward in the past so nothing uh, nothing uh, according to what has been done kind of slow motion in the past in our large cities, the message is to go forth as a lamp that burneth. God will raise up laborers for his work. His angels will go before them. So look at this verse. His angels will go before these people, before us, if we take the responsibility to preach the gospel, to share Jesus Christ with other people. And then how can we do that? So I put here some examples of, uh, of how we can reach other people, how we can share the gospel with other people. And then we, uh, we should follow Christ's method alone. So the first column here is Christ's method alone. Mingle with people empathize with them didn't do not judge them did not put them down um, love the suffer and seek help the misfortunate heal them uh, take care of their uh, their health and taught them the good news of the gospel that is the last part and how can we do that we could use different methods friendship um, some trade same trade and same profession so friends that we have things in common same ethnicity same language academicians uh, or other professions that are that are close to your profession or with prayer sessions community empowering health promotion relationship seminars mental health seminars support groups and the list might be infinite of things that can be done uh, to attract people to to get in common with the needs of the people and then later on we can share Jesus with them the weekly challenge for you is that prayerfully ask God to specifically guide you on how to best witness to someone you know and sometimes what we need to, to say is that how or what Jesus have done to you. So Jesus in your life, in my life, how is it working? How did it work? How good is for me? What is my experience with Jesus Christ? Then another advanced challenge is that explore social networks as a possible Areopagus so that you can present the gospel to non-believers with the clarity and discretion of Paul. So find out places where people are there and they might be interested in the, in the gospel and then share with them, getting things in common with them. And then we will finish with this song, Because He Lives. So his song is a very beautiful one, that one of my favorites. And uh, the first line say, say that God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. So this is what we have to do the same. We have to love, we have to heal and we have to forgive people, no matter what. 
he lived and died and died to buy my pardon so he died for for me to be forgiven and then there is an empty grave there to prove that my savior lived because lives because he had resurrected and he went to heaven and then one day he's coming back to take you and me to live with him forever i hope this will be our hope let's pray together heavenly father we thank you for sending jesus to save us and open our minds and open the opportunities for us to share this with other people Forgive our sins and be with everyone that is watching this session. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God send his son. Because